Oi, punters. I know that we Aussies are used to being America's bitch, but you will never guess which country is getting rich off our government's utter stupidity. Go on, take a guess. I'll wait. Did you guess Japan? Because if you did, you'd be right. The Japanese government is just pulling the strings of our government. And yep, you guessed it. We Aussie punters once again are left holding the bag. What shape is that bag? Well, the bag is in the shape of the world's most expensive gas prices when we have the most gas in the world. Yep, I'm harping on about this because it just keeps getting worse and worse. So bear with me and you will be just as outraged as I was. Oi, quickly, could you just hit the like button? Like, please. I don't want to have to beg, but seriously, I'll beg. No, no, cheers. All right, on with it. As I've covered in other videos, what makes us Aussies the dumbest punts in the world is that we give away 56% of our gas for free. And what does that leave us with? Well, no royalties whatsoever, but it leaves us with the most expensive gas in the world. US gets $2.50 a gilajoule, Europe $8.00. Asia $10 and Australia $11 and $12. Western Australia, in fact, only pays $5 a gigajoule. It's still a bit of a joke considering the US get it at $2.50, but it's way cheaper than we punters on the East Coast. So what is so outrageous and how is Japan involved? Would you like to take a guess at where our gas goes? Well, it goes to Japan. Japan say they need our gas for energy security. Take a look at this. In 2023, 43% of LNG and 66% of coal that went into the Japanese economy came from Australia. As part of Japan's energy security policy, the Japanese government founded a state-owned energy company called Inpex. Who doesn't have a state-owned energy company? We Aussies! Fact checks welcome, citations below. But I'm not aware of any Australian company that's drilling our own gas, that's digging our own coal and giving it back to we Aussie punters. A smarter government like Japan has one. And guess what? They're so smart that they went, who's got the gas? Let's make a company called Inpex. Let's send it to Australia. Let's take their gas for free, not pay any royalties, ship it back to our country. And here's the real kicker. They tell us in our government, we need it for energy security. If we don't have it, we won't have enough energy. Well, we have just been taken for an absolute ride. Because it turns out, while Japan is crying poor about not having enough gas, it's been revealed that Japan has been taking so much of our gas on such generous terms that they are on selling our gas for profit. So you know which country is getting rich off your gas? It's the Japanese. Japanese punters over in Japan are getting rich off our gas because we are stupid enough to give it away for free. Our punters, it gets even worse. I know I'm getting worked up, but it literally gets even worse. So self-proclaimed transparency warrior Rex Patrick, you might have heard of him, former senator, literally all he does with his time now is file freedom of information requests for the government to get information that we are entitled to. And he did this on the issue of our gas and advice was given. So back 2019, while well, you know what was going on, the Australian government was actually considering implementing a gas reserve policy. Yep, like the one that WA have and like the one that makes energy affordable and cheap. The government announced that it was going to consider this and they set about preparing an issue paper. This was completed in 2020. There were submissions re received, I guess a boring process on how the government receives advice on upcoming policies that they ought to be doing. And then ScoMo, who was all about gas-fired recovery, which turns out to be code for giving our gas away for free to foreign corporations and other governments and we foot the bill. Less catchy name, I know. But the paper that was completed that was giving advice to the government somehow disappeared and was buried. So Rex Patrick filed an FOI. He goes, show me that. I want to see the advice that was given that you ignored that we stopped hearing about. Because all of a sudden, the federal government was going to consider this. It hasn't happened. It's 2024 and we are still paying through the nose for gas. I don't bloody turn on my heater in during winter because it's, I can't afford it. I'm just looking at the bill going, I'm not paying that. I'll put on a jumper. And maybe you're the same. And it's all because of this. So as Rex went to get access to this paper, it turned out that the Albo government, yep, the one that said we need transparent government, 
that very same Albo, wanted to keep this paper under wraps. They denied access to everything. They said, no, you can't see anything to do with it. Not one word was to be released to the public. So, <laughs> props to Rex. He dropped over $1,000 of his own cash to go to an appeals tribunal, kick it higher up the bureaucratic chain to say this is illegal. We punters have a right to see what advice was given to the government and why the bloody hell they've done nothing about it. This video is brought to you by the Punters Politics Podcast. This is the podcast I release every week, making politics simple for the everyday punter. If you like podcasts, check it out. On with it. The story goes, he battles lawyers, solicitors, Albo spending hundreds and thousands of taxpayer money to keep this document hidden until 2042, which is 18 years away. That's when we can see what was in this document. In the end, some of the document was released, but not all of it. And Rex concludes that free debate in this country about our own energy resources that you own, that I own, is being heavily censored in the interest of the Japanese, South Korean, and Singaporean governments and energy giants in those countries to keep them happy. So essentially what they said is, we can't release what was in this paper because it might upset our trading partners and it would hurt our relationship with them if we Aussie punters worked out exactly what the Japanese have been doing to get our gas, to take our gas, and to sell our gas. So it seems like, the government has put in your taxpayer dollars to fight, to keep information hidden, to keep a foreign government happy, to keep a corporation that operates in Australia, drills our gas, drills in our oceans, drills on our shores, pollutes our cities, pays no tax, gets our gas for free, ships it overseas, sells it on to other com countries and gets rich. And when we want to see the information and advice given to the government that we pay for, our government fights with our taxpayer dollars to keep this a secret from you. They don't want Aussie punters knowing exactly how much the Japanese are scamming out of our country because it might hurt our foreign diplomatic relationships. Well, yeah, J Japan might not actually be happy to stop getting our gas for free, but you know what? It's our bloody gas pay us for it. Other information, ministerial's briefings revealed through the FOI, has already shown that the Albanese government has been pressured by Japan to ensure that they have a long-term supply of gas on highly favourable and profitable terms. Inpex, a 0.3% corporate tax rate on more than $41 billion. Get the hell out! We are basically giving our gas away for free, being told that we need to do more for energy security, but then it turns out that they're exporting even more gas than we are sending to them. Back in Japan, LNG supply far exceeds their domestic consumption. Japan has been exporting more LNG than it imported from Australia for the past three years. Now, all this talk of Japan, I was thinking, why have I heard so much about Japan and our energy and our coal? So we're talking gas right now. And then it hit me. I made an Instagram reel a while ago, ripping off this lobby group's ad that Queenslanders saw all the time. Punters were sending it to me being, I'm sick of this ad. So this is blatant billionaire propaganda, which is now on the side of and taking money from foreign governments to propagandize we Aussies into giving our resources away for free. Let's take a look at this ad. The resources industry is Queensland's nest egg ensuring our state's prosperity by contributing billions of dollars to roads, police, hospitals and schools. But for short-term gain, the state government introduced the world's highest coal royalty tax. That's a lie. It's a progressive system and when they cherry pick certain things when it's at a certain price, then they say it's the world's highest. Liars. Liars, lies, 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 lies. Oh, and the other lie is they call it a royalty tax. No, you idiots. It's called a royalty. They upped the royalty, but they want you to think that it's a tax so that you vote against your best interest, which thankfully the Queensland government still have it in play, but there's an election <laughs> this week, next week. And if the, and there's a high chance that if the Liberal government get in, they'll likely get rid of this. Queensland's nest egg under pressure. Already Queensland's reputation has been damaged. So that's what I remember seeing. I remember seeing, oh, hurting ties with Japan. Turns out it comes from Murdoch's propaganda machine, The Australian. The Japanese ambassador, Shingo Yamagami, says foreign investors were yet to see a glimmer of hope that this hike would be wound back. Mr. Yamagami says the tax will damage Australia's trading relationship with, with Japan. Uh-uh, it will hurt Japan's very profitable deals that it's scamming out of Australians right now. But you notice why this is a Murdoch rag propaganda machine. It's because they're still calling it a tax. That is wrong. This is is a royalty payment for our coal. It goes higher when the price goes higher so that when a windfall across the world 
drives coal prices higher. We get more for that rather than Japanese owned mining companies getting all the profit. We Aussie punters get more profit from the product that their entire business relies on. We own the very essence and core of their business, but we keep being convinced to give it to them for free. So I don't know, make sure you're sharing this with another punter that just knows just how big this scam is. Because we are not allowed to debate in public, have information about, we are not allowed to see what the government's decisions are being made about our own energy security. This isn't about foreign affairs. This is about you turning on your heater and why it costs so bloody much. As Rex points out, to be clear, the document he was seeking was a domestic policy options paper. And the effect of the government's successful claim in the AAT, which is the high bureaucratic <laughs> court there, is that Australians are not allowed to engage in public policy because it might offend the Japanese. Because the Japanese might get offended. If we Aussies woke the hell up and said, Oi! That's our gas. You're getting rich off it and on selling it. You need to pay us for that gas. The propaganda that we keep being sold is that it will hurt our foreign investment. All foreign investment means in this case is that another country is investing in their own company that makes money off it to take what they need from us and leaving us with all the damage, with all the environmental damage to clean up, with all the air pollution, look right here, going into Darwin. Thousands of toxic chemicals that aren't being measured. I've spoken about this before. VOCs. These are benzenes that are known to cause cancer. So we're getting cancer while the Japanese government is getting rich off our resources. I've probably repeated myself a few times, but I'm just completely incredulous at this development that I've learned that smarter people have pointed out. So this is such a joke, and clearly our politicians are doing nothing about it. They'd, they'd rather serve the interests of foreign governments and foreign corporations owned by foreign governments than help we punters. So that's why I started, and if you listen to the Punters Politics podcast, you'll see what I've started here. It's a campaign that's currently raised $27,000 to get some billboards to put around. I'm thinking of putting them up in the lead up to the election. This is just a mock-up and a bit of a... <laughs> what I, what I I potentially might be posting around the cities. Why so small? How much we're getting from our gas royalties? Maybe I'll make one that's specific to Impex or specific to Santos. I don't know. You tell me. But any dollar amount would help. The more independent, the more people that donate to this, 594 people have donated. That's so amazing. $5, $10, $20. Whatever people, punters can afford. Because our government's doing nothing about it. Our corporate media is completely ignoring it. So <laughs> I've taken it upon myself on behalf of all the punters to raise all this money with you guys and to put the word out there on some billboard so that every Aussie punter understands and knows the biggest con that has been run by foreign governments on we Aussie punters. So if you have a couple bucks, the more money we get, the more billboards we'll see put around Australia in just some really good locations. If you want to stay up to date on this billboard campaign, then check out the Punters Politics podcast. I'll give updates each week as we keep raising money, design the billboards, and then select the locations where they're going to be put up. So massive thanks to we the punters over on Patreon. These are the punters that keep me making videos about the things that I think are important that people aren't paying attention to rather than making the videos that just get the clicks. Only reason these videos get seen is because punters like you share them. So feel free to share this with a punter who might not know how scammed we're getting. Please hit the like, subscribe, bell icon, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, punts. Yeah.